the underground the, the series the show mm-hmm. i used to love i don't know why they yeah. canceled that but underground i remember them you know doing the map thing I just don't think that there was like much of a highlight on it. Like they'll probably mm-hmm. do it they and they'll it. go right to the next scene. What's good, good y'all? It's, it's the Duma Shats React, and, and we're back, back with, with another video. video. Who we got today, see? Today we are back with another American reaction. Super excited to show you guys this video because I don't think a lot of people know this history. I mean, we're about to get into it. They're about to figure out a lot this month. Yes, we surely is. This is Black History Month, guys. So, if you're new to us and, and we're new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on, on the, the road, road to 100 100K. K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. The hair history of Afro-descended people has a very special place in our hearts. Our hair culture goes back thousands of years. It's a huge part of our identity, and that's why historically it's been under constant attack. During the enslavement of African people, their hair was often shaved off to separate them from any former identity. Mm. But ironically, based on oral accounts, some enslaved Africans still managed to devise a brilliant plan of resistance that involved their hair. <laughs> Hair is identity, man. Mm-hmm. Like especially back in the day, it, yeah. it, it, it set them apart. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, if you even look at how they operate today with their tribes, they're still doing things concerning their hair. Yes. You know, so if you it's... look at like how we still do our hair, even here, even in the diaspora, mm-hmm. you know, it's still identifiable. <laughs> What up, African world? It's Home Team here, and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like to show your support, you may do so by clicking the link in the description box below. African hairstyles have been used to express beauty standards, spiritual devotion, social status, and interestingly enough, during enslavement, our hair has even been made into messages to guide us on our journey to freedom. When we really think about it, This oral history should not be a surprise to us at all because of the numerous ways we style our hair. Cornrows seems to have been a universal African trait and during slavery, apparently, Africans from South America found creative ways to not only resist slavery, but escape it. Now, there are some who are skeptical of this history in particular, as many are hesitant to rely on oral accounts for this information. In fairness, It would make sense that this knowledge would only survive amongst enslaved people orally, especially because it had to remain a secret amongst enslaved Africans for so long. Even for Africans who did escape with the aid of communication through hair, it's unlikely that they would speak much about it after freedom, likely to ensure its continued use amongst other Africans. We're still discovering things today about how Africans resist- I wish it was like that today. But we can say something and it don't have to always be broadcast. Yeah. I feel like if you tell one person something, keep that loyalty between that individual and y'all hold that down. But you tell one person something these days, gossip is a curse, bro. Yes. Gossip going to have you hearing things you don't need to hear these days. Yes. <laughs> and real. sometimes it is necessary to gatekeep. Yeah. You know. That's the term. Ooh, that's a bar. That's it, it right there. It is. It's necessary to keep things to yourselves. Mm-hmm. Sid. So it's best we remain open. Regardless, the social significance of African hair and how it sends messages has been proven through the records of African civilization. Since ancient times, African hairstyles have revealed a person's age, birthplace, clan membership, socioeconomic status, marital status, and occupation. Beautiful crowns were fashioned out of leather, gold, beads, and fancy braids. Priests were also recognized by hairstyles that set them apart from other community members. Before marriage, Igbo girls in present-day Nigeria use clay, ground coil, and palm oil to shape their hair into a horn shape that bends toward their brows. While married women have plainer, covered styles, girls in Senegal wear braids and whimsical styles. In Kenya, young Mm. Turkana men spend hours getting their hair styled elaborately to show they had completed the initiation rites for adulthood. 
In some ancient societies, African men wore their hair in a distinctive style when they were about to go to war. This signaled... I feel like we still had this coming up inside of the black home. Yeah. Like, there were some, certain hairstyles that you can only wear as a kid. There was nothing more, nothing less. Yes, I mean, just the, the time it takes to do our hair. I'm just saying. Like, Does yeah, it take yeah. anybody that long to do hair? What grown woman you know who still wear borets? Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nah. I feel like for the young for the young boys, though, they do come off with the adult style hair these yeah, days. Yeah, these, these days. days. But back in the days, I'm going to say like I'm an old dude back in my day. Yeah, we didn't have all that. We couldn't have. One style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we kind of did have this, this thing going on coming up as well. Yeah, for me, um, you know, I had the barrettes. Or whatever, you know, nah. Right, right. Nah, I had the Jerry Curl, too. Slick down like that? Yes, I had a Jerry Curl. Call I don't know wet. why I had a Jerry Curl. <laughs> but I had a Jerry Curl Woo. back in the day. Child, that drip drip was real, huh? Yes, I don't, I, don't, I don't know why I had a Jerry Curl. Okay. But, um, you know, and you, of course you'll get your hair done for special occasions. Facts, but like, facts, facts. Yeah. Same styles. <laughs> Their families to prepare for a possible death. So the use of creative styling with African hair has a very long tradition and being the adaptable, intelligent people they were. Okay, so I would love to know, like, what are the traditions now with the hairstyles? Um, let us know because the only hairstyle that I can, like, look at a hairstyle now know, like, where they're from Yeah, is Ethiopia. Okay. That's that's the only ones. Okay, I have one too. I think we're probably talking about the same one. What? The braids. Um, the braids, but with the big fro with it. Ethiopia. That's Ethiopia. Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. Very unique styles. Yeah. Africans in South America once again drew from that ancient knowledge, supposedly creating roadmaps or signals to freedom through elaborate cornrow patterns. Hmm. There's some speculation that well, in. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's not just South America, because we heard that was in our history books, especially when you got to the black history classes. Yeah. That was in North America as well. But they didn't put that in the movies. The hair song? Yeah. No. Name babe. one. I need somebody to name no, one slave name, movie I, where they use their hair. Like, they simply say, hey, you know, we're about to do this in our hair. We're going to use this to help I us get free. I can't name the movie I don't because I've movie. watched so many, but I mean, yes. Especially Roots. Roots they do didn't it. They do it in Roots? Yes, they did. they did. They'll do the hair and they'll be like, this is the map. And then they also put then. food in the hair. I've seen that happen, but I don't yeah. think I've seen... They'll put food in the hair so that the people will have food to eat it's... while they're on the underground railroad. Maybe it wasn't common in the slavery movies then. Because I didn't see that too often. I've seen a lot of slave movies. And I know the underground... The Underground, remember the, the series, the show? Mm -hmm. I used to love, I don't know why they yeah. canceled that. But Underground, I remember them, you know, doing the map thing. I just don't think that there was, like, much of a highlight on it. Like, they'll probably mm -hmm. do it they and it'll it. go right to the next scene. But, like, an uh, emphasis on them braiding the hair. Because I remember yeah. learning about how they, they would put the food in the corn roll. You know, so that they'll have food to eat mm -hmm. once they don't need that math anymore. Enslaved African named Benkos, who formed a maroon community of former enslaved people, used cornrows as a way to relay messages and identify landmarks for freedom. This hasn't been confirmed by mainstream scholars, but it does seem plausible given the extensive history of African hair communication. One local oral historian and hair braider in Colombia named Ziomara Asprilla Garcia explained the history of how hair braiding was used to relay messages. In the time of slavery in Colombia, hair braiding was used to relay messages. For example, to signal that they wanted to escape, women would braid a hairstyle called departes. Mm. It had thick, tight braids braided closely to the scalp and was tied into buns on the top. And another style had curved braids, tightly braided on their heads. The curved braids would represent the roads they would use to escape. In the braids, they also kept gold and hid seeds, which, in the long run, helped them survive after they escaped. This oral history is extraordinarily valuable to the African diaspora because it affirms the African tradition of sending messages through hair. The spiritual aspect of African hair remains the center of it all. These enslaved Africans, no doubt, never forgot the significance of it, and so using the hair to communicate in their darkest hour certainly had a spiritual component. Now, 
I would have to like really dig into the history of the hair shows that we have now. But how her hair is in this picture. This reminds me of our hair shows when our hairstylists have the little competition, well, not little, big competition, mm -hmm. and um, they're making all of this, these different types of art. I wonder if there's like a correlation there between so. that. I would, I would I'll Yeah, I'll so. have to go research that. Yeah. Let us know if you know the answer to that. To it. Because for some African cultures, communication from the gods and spirits was thought to pass through the hair. And I can only imagine that there's nothing more spiritually healing or divine than receiving a message through the here leading you to freedom. Mm. It's one of the most effective ways to use your culture and your crown to liberate yourself from tyranny. Hopefully one day there will be more information on this topic to make it more mainstream within our community because it may help us to appreciate our hair more and take pride in where we come from. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in this continued production, Consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. Yes, go check out his channel, so guys. Great how, content. So what did they do to stop them from using their hair? Cut it off. Not, they cut it off, right? And that reminds me of um, the language barrier, too, how they stopped them from reading, mm. right? Because yep. when they didn't, when they wasn't familiar with what they were saying, they would use their, their native tongue to mm -hmm. speak in codes around their, mm -hmm. the slave masters and stuff so they can, you know, do things correctly. And they mm -hmm. even did it with the music as well. Mm -hmm. You feel oh, me? Oh, we get into that. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to... Stay tuned to that, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Stay but, tuned. Um, I do want to comment on what you said, though. Um, they were even punished if they spoke in their native tongue. So yeah. that's how, yeah. like, you know, AAVE was uh, created and some of the other languages was created mm -hmm. that we use here in around the diaspora. Of course, we're still learning about the other areas of the diaspora, facts, facts. but our, what we know, know to be true is in the United States. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks. If you would like to support the channel that way, as well as our join feature to become a VIP member of the channel, send in your reaction request through our subscription box below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.